Hello, welcome to this webinar on getting started with checksums in Amazon S3 for data integrity checking. My name is Nitish Pandey, and I'm a product manager at Amazon S3 and Glacier team. And I'm joined today by Yanko Bolanios, who is a senior solutions architect at AWS. Today, we have arranged this session into two segments. First, we will briefly talk about checksums and how customers use them in Amazon S3. Then we'll talk about the existing and recently added data validation capabilities in Amazon S3. This will be followed by a quick demo of these basic concepts. And in the second part of the session, we will cover two recently added capabilities to perform faster integrity checks, followed by the second demo for a better understanding of these concepts. And with that, let's get started. Let's start with the basics. What are checksums? A simple way of thinking about checksum is that it is the digital fingerprint for an object which can be used to track any change in data during transmission or at rest. A checksum, also sometimes referred to as a hash, is an alphanumeric value that uniquely represents the contents of an object. It is derived from the bits of the object data using a checksum function, in this case, CRC32. So how do we use checksums? It's simple. You calculate the checksum of the object at the source and then after the transmission and compare the two checksums. If they match, then perfect. Your data, despite traveling at the speed of light, is still unchanged. And if they do not match, it means the source object and the destination object are not the same. And Amazon S3 can use this information to only succeed the request when these checksums match. Now that you know about checksums, let's talk about a few common use cases. We are always amazed by the ingenuity of our customers like you. We launch a new feature with few applications in mind, and you will tell us how you used it for a totally different problem that you're trying to solve. A few common applications that we heard from you around data integrity checking are migration to cloud, digital preservation, and deduplication. We have a number of customers who are migrating their entire on-prem data infrastructure or digital assets stored on other cloud to AWS. They are moving billions of objects and 100 plus petabytes of data to S3 and Glacier. Customers told us that they trust AWS and also want to verify every byte landing in AWS as a durability best practice. Similarly, we have many customers and government agencies who are focused towards preserving their archives. And they use checksums for end-to-end -end data integrity to maintain the chain of custody. And then we also talk to customers who use checksums for deduplication. And there is a long list of customer applications, but these are the most common use cases that we heard from our customers. Now we want to give you an overview of the checksum capabilities we have in Amazon S3 for data validation. Amazon S3 is the first storage service in the cloud to support a range of checksum algorithms you have the flexibility to pick the algorithm that best suits your business needs. Then you can also use newly launched features like trailing checksum and parallel checksum operations. These capabilities are especially useful when you're dealing with streaming uploads or multi-part objects. We will cover each of them in detail during the following sections and provide you a demo. Since launch, Amazon S3 has supported MD5 checksums for data validation. A lot of customers use MD5 checksums and e-tags for data integrity checking. During upload, you can provide the content MD5 in the header of the put request to validate the object. Similarly, customers also use e-tags for validations. E-tags may or may not be the MD5 of the object depending on how the objects were created. Last year, we extended Amazon S3 support to additional checksum algorithms. 
and you can now choose from four supported checksum algorithms for data integrity checking on your upload and download requests. In addition, you can select one of the four algorithms and provide a pre-calculated checksum value already stored on your system. Amazon S3 will use that checksum value to validate the objects and store it throughout the lifespan of the object in S3. When you download the object, we will use the exact same checksum you provided at the time of upload to offer you end-to-end -end data integrity. Now you can ask, which algorithm should I pick? And the answer really depends on your business and compliance needs. If you are streaming digital content to Amazon S3 and looking for performance and faster validations, then you can use CRC32C. On the other hand, if you are working in the archive preservation domain or have compliance needs to use SHA-1 or SHA-256, then you can opt for them. For example, if you're storing genomics data and FDA requires you to use SHA-256, then you have the flexibility to pick that algorithm. Whereas if you're a streaming company and want fast data validation as a durability best practice, then you can pick CRC32. It all depends on your use case and having these options provide you the flexibility. Now I'll hand off the screen to Yanko, who will share a demo on how to add checksums when uploading a new object or to existing objects in Amazon S3. Thank you, Nitish. Hi, everyone. My name is Yanko Bolaños, and I'm a solutions architect at AWS. I've been at AWS for a little over two years, but my journey into AWS started about 15 years ago, and it all started with Amazon S3. You see, when I'm not being a solutions architect, I'm usually tinkering away in one of my hobbies, and the oldest hobby that I had is photography. At the time, I was looking for an online storage platform where I could safely store all my photos. I didn't want to keep hard drives since I knew maintaining those hard drives would be too much of a hassle. So after doing some research, I found out about Amazon S3, and that's when my cloud journey began. I began to upload my collections of photos with the goal of keeping backups so I could later, later revisit them. At the time, the best way to ensure data integrity was using eTag. Fast forward to today, Last year, we introduced new algorithms that allow you to check your data, which include, as Natish has already mentioned, SHA-1, SHA-256, CRC-32, and CRC-32C. As a solutions architect, I have worked with customers of all sizes, including some of the largest media and entertainment customers. And when it comes to the content that our customers are creating, data integrity is always at the top of the list when it comes to priorities whether it's for sentimental value like myself or because your business identity depends on that content. Using checksums is a best practice to ensure that data is transferred and stored without any corruption. I will be walking you through a few demos that highlight some of the features that we will be covering today. On the first demo, we're going to cover how to get started with checksums in the Amazon S3 AWS console. So I'm gonna hop into my browser and head over to the Amazon S3 console. Okay, so I'm gonna select the buckets section. I already have an existing bucket. I'm gonna select that bucket and I'm gonna upload a file. Select add files. And I'm gonna select this picture of my daughter that I recently took at a pumpkin patch. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom where it says properties, and then I'm going to keep scrolling down until I find additional checksums. Okay, here's additional checksums. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to select a function. For this one, I'm going to use SHA-256. I'm going to leave the pre-calculated value empty for now, but we'll come back to that later. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and select upload. Okay, now that the file has uploaded, I can close and let's visit that file. Let's select the file and that'll drop us into the property section. Now, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I'll find the additional checksums. Here we go. Now, in this additional checksum section, 
we can see that it calculated a SHA-256 and it prints out the checksum value. In my local computer, I can check that file, check that checksum. So let's copy that command, paste it, and I'm using a SHA sum function 256 on that same file that I uploaded. Now we can see that this checksum matches to the one that we have over here. Okay, let's try that again, but this time we're gonna specify a checksum when we upload the file. Let's go back to our bucket. We're gonna hit upload again. We're going to add a file. And I'm gonna select another photo from my daughter at a pumpkin patch. We gotta make sure that we save those moments. Okay, again, I'm gonna scroll down. Properties. Scroll down to additional checksums. Turn that on. Select chat 256. And this time I'm gonna calculate before uploading the file. So I'm gonna paste this command and we run again the same function and we can see the checksum for this specific file. So let's copy this value and put it on the console. Now, just for testing purposes, if I were to change one of these numbers, let's change the three to a four, and I scroll down and try to upload, the console has immediately given me an error. This is because the console calculated the checksum locally and it prevented me from uploading the file. The same thing happens when the SDK is uploading a file, but when S3, when the Amazon S3 backend receives that, it checks against that checksum and it will reject the file if they don't match. Let's set that back to a three, and now let's upload it. Perfect. Let's go check on that file. This file. We'll scroll down. And here we can see that the checksum matches. Okay, so what do we do if we want to apply the same operation to multiple files or objects that we already have on Amazon S3? To do that, the best way to do it is using Amazon S3 batch operations. So let's do it. We're going to expand the menu on the side. We're going to select batch operations. And we're going to create a new job. On the new job, we're going to stay on the US West tool, um, region, and we're going to provide it a manifest file. S3 batch operations works on thousands of files, and the way it does that is by uh, receiving a manifest file as an input on the objects that it needs to operate on. The manifest file look is, looks something like this. It's the bucket name and the file that we will be operating on. So this manifest file has seven items, seven objects that we will be working on. I've already uploaded this manifest file to S3. It's in our bucket. So let's select that bucket and then select manifest, then choose path. We're going to scroll down and hit next. Now with S3 batch operations, there are several operations that you can perform on the file. For example, you can replace all the object tags, you can delete all object tags, you can replace ACLs, you can restore objects from our clay chart tiers, or you can lock uh, objects. The other thing you can do is you can invoke a Lambda function on that specific object. And this opens an unlimited amount of operations that you can perform on those objects. Now for today, what we want to do is we want to perform a copy operation. So we select copy, and then we scroll down to copy destination. We're going to put them in the same bucket that we've been using. But I'm going to put them in an output folder. Next, I'm going to select that I acknowledge that existing objects uh, will be overridden since I'm not using versioning. Next, I'm going to scroll 
to the bottom and find additional checksums. Here we go. So we want to tell it to replace it with a new checksum function. We're going to select SHA256. And next, we're going to scroll to the bottom and say next. In this section, I want to make sure that generate completion report is enabled. I really like using generation completion reports because it tells me if there's an error, I can go back and debug where that error was found. It also gives me a little more details of the job when it ran. So let's browse and just store it in the root of our bucket. Next, we want to scroll down, and this is an important part for batch operations. We want to make sure that batch operations is allowed to perform operations in your specific objects. So for that, we need an IM role. Now, I've already created the IM role that I'm going to be using, but the console provides this really handy template that you can expand here and then copy and paste it onto your IM console if you want to create the role. Just make sure you update the locations of where the files are going to be stored. So I'm going to select the role that I've previously created. It's called S3 Patch Up Role. I'm going to scroll down and select Next. And this is just a review of everything that we've selected for the batch operations. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and say Create Job. Perfect. So right now, batch operations is scanning our manifest file. If I refresh this, I'll see that there is a total, total object of seven, which means S3 batch operations has scanned our manifest file. Now it's only awaiting for our confirmation to run. So we can select the job and say run job. I'm going to scroll down. This is just a confirmation page. And on the bottom, I'm going to say run job. Great. Now batch operations is running and I'm going to refresh this, but pretty soon we'll be able to see this percent complete column change from zero to a hundred. Here we go. It only took a few seconds since there was just seven files. I'm going to select on this job ID. I'm going to scroll down and we can find the output under the copy section. So if we open that directory, we can see the seven files that we were creating checksums for. If we select one of them, we can scroll down to additional checksums and see that SHA-256 was performed, and here's a SHA-256 checksum for that specific file. Thank you. Back to you, Nitish. Thanks, Yanko. In this half of the presentation, we will cover how you can accelerate the integrity checking of your data. We talk to customers who are dealing with bigger and bigger objects, from media houses who are generating ultra high definition videos, space technology and geospatial companies capturing and storing high resolution images of the planet, to research institutes storing and processing large genome data sets. These are a few examples, but really this is something that we are seeing across industries. The objects are getting bigger and bigger, and as that has happened, integrity checking gets harder. Well, because math, checksums take longer and longer to run. This means they become more expensive and time consuming. So we went back and tried to figure out how we could make integrity checking on big objects faster and more reliable for customers. At the end of the day, if you want to speed up a process by an order of magnitude or so, you probably need to figure out how to parallelize it. And that's what we have done here. We have introduced two optimizations for integrity checking. The first thing that we did was to enable you to pass in a checksum as a trailer instead of only as a header. Now, this is a bit subtle, but it has a huge impact. It means that we can calculate a checksum as you stream the bits to S3 and then just append it onto the end of the request. 
The second thing that we did was to enable customers to break up large objects into parts and then to checksum those parts in parallel. This is a big deal too, because it means that you do not have to sequentially process a huge object that could be terabytes in size. You can break it up and farm that work out to many cores, all working in parallel to check your object. So that's what we have done. Let's dive a bit deeper into each one of these options so that you can see how each of them works. So first, let me talk about trailing checksums. To verify the integrity of your data, you first calculate the checksum of the object on the client side, then upload the object to S3. But these two things, the calculation of the checksum and the streaming of the bits into S3 have to happen sequentially. This means that both operations take their own wall clock time and processing power which means more time and cost. But with trailing checksums, what you're doing is to calculate a checksum as you stream the data into S3. This saves you time as you're able to both verify and transmit your data in a single pass instead of as two sequential operations. To do that, you specify the checksum algorithms in the checksum algorithm member of the put request using AWS SDK and upload the object. The AWS SDK will automatically calculate the checksum and append it as a trailer to that request. This workflow is efficient and will save you time and resources as you don't have to calculate the checksum on the client side separately before uploading the object. It also enables computing checksums on streaming uploads where storing the object to a disk as an intermediate step would not have been possible. Next, let me talk about parallel checksum operations. Now, when you upload a big object into Amazon S3, you are using S3's multi-part upload API to do that. Our new checksum options will continue to work with multi-part uploads with minimal changes, just like with simple single part objects. You can pass in a new checksum algorithm like SHA-256 and we will happily check the object with the algo that you specify. Now, just like we do with our MD5 checksums, the whole object checksum will actually be a checksum of checksums. So how do we calculate that value? It's calculated by checksumming each of individual parts checksum to provide a whole object checksum. This is useful, but to compute this value, I need the part sizes or boundaries to do a full object validation for any object just sitting in S3. This data was not easily accessible. So to help you to completely parallelize checksum operation, we launch a new API called get object attributes, which provides part level metadata and checksum. When you call this API against an object in S3, it gives you checksum algorithm, checksum value, number of parts, part boundaries, part level checksum values, all the information that you need to go run integrity checks on a large object in parallel down to the part level. So whereas a single checksum on a large object took us about 86 minutes, with those same EC2 instant types, we were able to get the data integrity checking time down to just seven minutes. We think that this is a game changer for our customers who need to run big integrity checks. Now, Yanko will share a demo on how to use these features. Thank you, Nitish. We're going to go over multi-part objects checksum of checksums, and trailing checksums. Customers often ask us how to calculate checksum of checksums and why it's designed this way. When we design new services or new features, we always try to look ahead and make sure that they will scale in the future. Calculating a single checksum of a large file is slow, and if for some reason the operation fails, we have to start again from the beginning, rendering all previous work useless. 
As files are getting larger and larger, we wanted our checksum process to be able to scale. We wanted it to be able to parallelize it, and we also wanted to be able to resume it in case it were to fail. So, using the AWS Go SDK, I have built a small utility that leverages these three features, multi-part uploads, checksum of checksums, and trailing checksums. First, it will allow me to specify the part size of the multi-part file. Next, it will use, utilize trailing checksum. This means that simultaneously as the file is being uploaded to S3, it's calculating the SHA-256 checksum. This saves time since we don't have to calculate the checksum first and then upload the file. When the SDK finalizes the upload, it sends the checksums of every part to the S3 backend to make sure that the checksums match. And lastly, this tool also has the functionality to run locally in my system. I can point it to the same file that I'll upload to Amazon S3, and it will print the checksums for each part as well as the checksums of checksums. Okay, I want to start by showing you part of the code. If we scroll up, this is using the AWS Go SDK and it's using the transfer manager. Now I want to scroll down to the part where we initialize the uploader. In here, I can specify the trailing checksum. In this case, I'm using SHA-256. Okay, so let's upload this file to Amazon S3. And I can do this, and I can do that with this command. I'm going to upload it and I'm specifying a part size of 512 megabytes, and I'm going to be using 48 threads on the instance to parallelize the upload. Let's copy this command, head over to the terminal, and begin the upload. On the right side, we can see the cores of our instance all working to upload the file. They're calculating the checksum as the file as the as every part is being uploaded. Okay, it's finished. And on the screen it has printed the checksum for every part as well as the checksum of checksums. It took about 18 seconds and this file is 57, uh, 57 gigabytes. So let's head over to the Amazon S3 console. I'm going to refresh this. Okay, we have our file. If we click on the file, we can look at the properties. And if we scroll down, we can check that there are additional checksums enabled, SHA-256, and we can compare this checksum of checksums against the one we uploaded, and they match. If I use the get object attributes API, I can check the individual parts and compare the checksums as well. Another thing that I can do with this utility is I can check locally the checksums of every part before I even upload the file to Amazon S3. That way I can know what I expect to see when the file is uploaded and I can validate that way. Let's do that. Again, we take this command and we're only going to perform a checksum, but we have to specify the same part size as when we're going to upload it. So in this case, it will be 512 megabytes and 48 threads, just like before. Copy that, head over here, and we paste it. And again, we can see all of the cores on our machine are working in parallel to calculate the checksum of checksums. Okay, it has finished, and again, we can see that our checksum is the same. So to summarize, Amazon S3 offers you a wide range of options to perform data integrity checking. You can use MD5 or the four additional checksums that were launched on 2022. You can also use trailing checksums and parallel integrity checks to improve the data validation performance. Next, I wanna share two links with you. The first one is a getting started guide that covers the concepts we covered in the first demo. It will, take, it will walk you through using additional checksums on the AWS console. The next link is a blog we wrote about the concepts of the last demo, how to scale the checksums process using multi-part uploads and checksum of checksums. 
Great. Thank you very much. I hope you found this talk helpful. We are excited for you to start using these new checksum capabilities to verify the integrity of your data on Amazon S3.